Welcome back to the Keg King channel, I'm Daniel. Unfortunately, if you're here, you might have overpressurized your keg and that's why you are trying to figure out how to depressurize it. So if you've got a commercial keg, it doesn't matter if it's A type or D type, and it doesn't matter if your couplers are A type, D type, S type. We've got them uh, coupled together with bits of different hardware on them. So depending on how your D type is, um, is equipped with either push-in fittings, or in this case, universal posts, or in this case, a standard barb with step clamps on it. I'm gonna show you how to depressurize if you might have overpressurized the headspace in your keg. So generally speaking, what happens with a lot of new keg owners is they get a regulator and they hook it up to their coupler and everything seems to be right. And without looking at gauges too much, if they turn it on, and we'll do that with this one here, now the bottle's on, but the regulator isn't doing anything. So without really knowing what to do, they start putting in a lot of pressure into the keg. Now, in short draw systems, you probably only need about 10 to 12 PSI, maybe 15 PSI for certain beers that you want heavier carbonation in. Um, mixed gas systems, you're gonna want a little bit more than that even. So if we're talking things like uh, stout taps and things, you can be up around 20, 25 PSI, sometimes even higher for nitrogen beer mixed gases. But what sometimes happens is people will just crank this thing all the way down and really put in a ton of pressure into this keg. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here. It's well above what we need, um, almost to about 20 PSI at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the bottle off so it's no longer dispensing the gas in there. But one of the problems is that even if I back this off, it's still gonna have the pressure in the headspace. So generally speaking, this is how you're going to begin. So you've got too much pressure in your system. The first thing you're gonna do, look at the gauge, find out how high it is. This low pressure gauge here on your regulator is gonna indicate what pressure you're feeding to your keg. If it's above 10 to 12 and you're in a fast tap kegerator, you're probably pushing too much pressure. Now you're gonna to have to relieve it. So to do this, the first step, we're gonna turn off the gas bottle. So if your gas bottle was on, and in this case you can kind of hear it's still feeding gas to the keg, we're gonna shut it off at the valve here first. The next thing you're gonna do is back off the bonnet all the way so it's no longer depressing the diaphragm on your regulator. That's nice and loose, it's not pressing on it anymore. And the next thing we're gonna do is pull this PRV between the two gauges, that's the pressure release valve, so that it drops back to zero. So now we know that this bottle and this regulator are no longer delivering gas to this coupler. So this is the gas line in, in your coupler, as you remember from when you set it up. And the thing we're gonna have to do now is without removing this coupler from the keg, we're going to back off this nut here to be able to relieve some of the pressure in the headspace of the keg. So we're just gonna let it all rush out. It's CO2, it's gonna be running back out into the atmosphere. You won't be hurting the beverage in here. So to do that, we're going to need a spanner. So these are 5 8 attachments. If you have a 5 8 spanner, it should work on this nut. And in this case, I've got an adjustable one so I can work it out. But what we're gonna do now, that the bottle is off, the regulator's backed off, the pressure's dropped back to zero, but we know that there's like 20 PSI in here or more. In your case, it could be even higher, right? And we're gonna back that off now so that we can bleed the gas out of the headspace until it's dropped back in pressure and we no longer hear hissing. So start by getting your spanner and backing off the attachment from the threading. So we're just gonna leave it like that until it's no longer hissing, and then we know that there's no longer any pressure in the headspace. So while this is venting, we can talk about what might have happened to your keg if it was cold while you had that much pressure on it. If you notice that it was overpressurized right off the bat, it'll be easier to fix. But what happens is if your keg was really cold and the pressure was on it for any long amount of time, like maybe overnight, or you didn't notice this for a couple of days, most likely the beverage inside at a cold temperature has onboarded some of that gas. So it's over carbonated your beverage as well. In order to like get the carbonation back out of the beer or whatever beverage it is, 
you're going to need to get this keg warm again. So after we've released the headspace pressure, if it was overcarbonated, if you've left it for a long amount of time inside the kegerator with a large amount of pressure on the headspace, you want to make sure to take the keg out and let it warm up back to room temperature. You can rock it around a little bit after it's warming up a bit to try to help shake some of the carbonation out of the keg again. Uh, definitely leave it so that it can vent just like this. Allow the keg to warm up and you might be able to get it to go back in carbonation to not quite flat, but definitely less than you've put into it with the extra high pressure. So now that it's stopped hissing, we've released all the pressure and you can see nothing else is coming out of that even when it's really loose. We'll tighten it back up, we'll repressurize our keg. So with your spanner, we'll tighten back up this nut. Remember clockwise to close, get it nice and tight. And now we're gonna set it for the right amount of pressure. You're gonna turn your bottle back on, make sure that your coupler's still engaged, everything's still fine here. And what you're gonna do is turn the bottle back on and then slowly depress the bonnet onto the diaphragm and bring it up to about 10 PSI, which is that increment there on your low pressure gauge. Once it's regulated and filled the headspace with 10 PSI and you can no longer hear it feeding gas into your keg, you're ready to go. You can test now again by pouring yourself a beer from your tap system. But let's look at this now from another type of coupler with different equipment on it. And we'll show you how to depressurize with those as well. If you have push-in fittings, this is how you're going to relieve the pressure from the keg with DM push-in fittings or any push-in fittings on your coupler. It's very simple. So again, you're gonna start by turning off your gas bottle so that the gas bottle valve is all the way down. You're gonna back off the bonnet and you're gonna pull the PRV. You're going to push down on the collar of your push fitting, which is this part on the very top of it. You're gonna push down here and you're gonna just pull out the gas line. We're gonna wait until that's actually completely purged of the pressure. Now we're gonna put back in that line, make sure it's nice and tight in there. And then again, you're just going to open your gas bottle. You're going to gently put the diaphragm back up to 10 PSI or whatever your serving pressure is for the temperature that you're sitting at in your kegerator. And that's it. You've now purged the headspace and now you're putting the proper amount of pressure in from the overpressurized keg. That's how to do it with push fittings. So in this case, we've got a D-type coupler and it's got universal 5 8 ball lock posts on them. So the universal is marked by these two lines that you see here and here on the 5 8 post adapter. So if you have a coupler like this, this is how to depressurize. Now really quick, just before we start with this, I'd like to show you a little something about these that makes them work even better. When you get 5 8 post adapters, especially these universal ones, you can take out this duckbill valve that's in the gas port. This makes it so that gas can come in and it's very difficult for gas to escape this way uh, because it's kind of like a one-way valve but for gas. In fact, it is a one-way valve for gas. So your 5 8 post actually has a black O-ring in it. It should come with it. So you can replace the duckbill valve for that black O-ring and just have that in place. Some people prefer the duckbill valve, but sometimes putting the 5 8 post over the duckbill valve when you have the black o-ring in place in here will shove the duckbill bill valve into the coupler and make it so that it actually clogs the gas post area or the, the gas entrance area of your coupler. So just a little tip for you, you can get rid of this duckbill valve before you start using 5 8 posts on your coupler. So, let's go ahead, we'll get this one set up. And again, it's engaged. Let's go ahead and hook up our gas. And we'll go ahead and hook up the liquid. So at this point, nothing's flowing. There should be extra pressure in here. This would be the easiest way to go ahead and bleed these 5 8 posts. We're gonna go ahead, turn off the bottle, take the bonnet off the diaphragm so that's loose, pull the PRV. What we can do, we can either, if you're using push fittings on your disconnects on these posts, you can just 
depressurize that way by pulling the line out of the disc, out of the push fitting like that. Now, if you have barb fittings on these disconnects and they're step clamped in, you don't have to go ahead and cut the lines. Don't do that. What you can do is just remove the disconnect and using your spanner, you're gonna loosen, we're gonna back it off and you'll hear it hissing. There you go. You can leave it like that. And if you're worried about extra high pressure, just don't touch it when it's like this. Um, and it will just bleed out the pressure in the headspace of the keg. We could even take it off because it's not that actually high in pressure. Once that pressure is gone, we can put this back on. Again, grab your spanner. Put the post back on nice and tight. Again, start with your gas bottle off. Hook up the gas, turn on the valve, and slowly bring the bonnet down on the diaphragm and bring up the pressure to the appropriate serving pressure of your keg. Thanks for watching, brewers. If you found this helpful, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.